And Father, I pray that wisdom and revelation flows freely, unhindered, uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic force. Speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. None of me and all of you. Father, I decrease so that the word of God may increase into the ears of these, your precious people. Now, Holy Spirit, you have the liberty to move as you will on the hearts of men, the hearts of women, the hearts of children. Oh, disperse peace, joy, and happiness in their hearts. And Father, I thank you that this word will change a thousand generations. And I declare, and Father, we just thank you in advance for the breakthrough, for the delivery, for the perfect peace that passes all understanding. Now, Father, you have your way in this service. You have your way in those living rooms. You have your way in those kitchens. You have your way in those beds. You, you have your way during this time. For the word of God is incorruptible. And Father, I declare that you are perfecting everything that concerns your people. We give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. And it's in Jesus' name. And Exhale Church said, Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead and shout right there in your living rooms and give God some praise for what he's already done. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and hop into this word. And, 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 and let the Word of God minister to us today. You know, it's a good time to be a believer. It's a good time to know the Lord. It's a good time to be steeped and stewed in your Word. It's a good time for you to have a personal relationship with God. It's the perfect time for you to exercise your faith and exercise yourselves unto godliness. You know, we said this earlier, we don't want to come out of this pandemic and, 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 and we don't want to come out of this pandemic and, and knowing that we didn't have 100 percent reliance on who we call our Lord. So there's there, there's a there's a there's a tremendous reliance that we should have right now on the Lord that should bring us perfect peace. Believe it or not, the more you lean on God, the more peace you have. The more you lean on self, the more chaotic things are going to be going on in your mind, in your soul, in your emotions. The more you're trying to be self-sufficient, you're going to be in worry, concern, and anxiety. But the more you lean on God, trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and lean not, lean not to your own understanding. But guess what? Acknowledge God in all your ways. And that's what I want you to start doing. Not saying that you haven't done it. But a lot of times we've got to be reminded of it. This morning we was listening to praise and worship, me and my wife. Uh, and, 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 and I was just reminded that, Derek, you are a born-again believer. <laughs> You're a God's child. You have a covenant with God. The last thing you want to do is have your thoughts, your words, running parallel with the world. And I want to say this to you. By the Spirit of God, do not feel guilty over the peace you have. Do not feel any kind of shame or guilt over the peace that passes all understanding. You're supposed to be set apart. You're supposed to have perfect peace. You're supposed to have a different countenance than those who don't have the Lord. You're supposed to. But I found myself saying, God, what? I mean, I I'm praying. I'm, 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 you are my source, uh, but I'm just not concerned anymore. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm praying for, 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 for a solution to come. I'm praying for the vaccine to come. I'm praying for the doctors, the healthcare workers, the government, people in authority. I'm praying for them, but this thing, it doesn't intimidate me anymore. It really doesn't. I've moved on from it because I'm a believer and I walk in perfect peace, the peace that passes all understanding. And my job is not to parent, pa parent what the news is saying. My job is not to send along a chain letter saying if we send this to 10 people, people are going to be healed. That's not my job. My job as a believer is to push back against this pandemic with prayer, faith, and confessions to the world that guess what? God is in control. And everything is going to be okay. But I did find myself saying, man, something must be wrong with you. I mean, where's your empathy at here? I mean, where's your feelings at? I'm like, I got my feelings. Well, I'm praying for everybody. I wake up and pray for this world, 
pray for this church, pray for my family before I even entertain the world telling me what's going on. There should be more prayer in us that's birthing more peace in us than those who don't have God. And you're going to get that by spending time with God, abiding in him and allowing him to abide in you. Glory to God. Fourth title uh, today is called Living in Perfect Peace, part two. Living in Perfect Peace, part two. Living everyday life in perfect peace. You know, perfect peace is not, man, we got three months of reserves put up. Perfect peace is not, man, we got six months of reserves put up. Perfect peace is not, man, my industry would never, would never let me go, so I'm, I'm secure. Perfect peace is not that. Perfect peace is in Jesus, your Lord and Savior. God is your source. God, Jesus told us, he said, do not trust in these deceitful riches. He said, there's two masters. There's one called money and there's one called me. And listen, perfect peace is not found in money. Perfect peace is found in your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But those things will try to bombard us and, 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 and stroke our emotions and say, because you have X, Y, and Z, this thing doesn't pertain to you. Because you have this, 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 and this in place, you'll never find yourself in that position. That's what mammon wants to tell you. But perfect peace says, no, 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 no. You need to start confessing God is your source. You know, I got a, a little thread there uh, with, with, with family, and, 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 and one, of the, one, one, of the, one of my young nephews, they, 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 they responded back to me and said, uh, hey, cuz, uh, man, uh, I appreciate you saying stay at home and stay safe. He said, I understand that. I've understood that for four weeks. He said, but he said, but he said, know this. He said, he said, a lot of people are saying stay at home and stay safe because they got money put up that they can live for the next two weeks. He said, I don't have that. He said, I know you're a pastor. He said, I need you to start believing God with me. <laughs> this is the believing God with me that I can get back to work, that I can get my hands back uh, uh, on the plow and I can start feeding my babies. That's what I need right now. And I'm, I understand stay at home. I understand stay safe. But I tell you what, I tell you what it told me. It told me, Derek, you need to shift. They understand that. But your stay at home and stay safe can't be because you got five years worth of money put up. It can't be because you got stocks and investments. It can't be because you're out of debt and all your needs are met. It needs to be stay at home and stay safe needs to be needs to be secondary to you praying for people to make sure they have daily bread on their table. And when you pray to God to take care of them, when you pray to God to, to give them daily bread, now you come home and say stay at home and stay safe. But don't get over engrossed and stay at home and stay safe and forget about those people who are saying, no, 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 no. I need to get back and get some money for my babies. I need to get back to work to put some food on the table here. So I have shifted and I am adding my faith. I am believing God with the scientists. I'm believing God with the people in authority. I'm believing God with the government. I'm believing God that he will come through on this thing. And so that the grandmothers in the cafeterias and the single moms with three babies they got to feed can get back to work to feed their family. Do you hear what I'm saying? Living in perfect peace. Let's go to, uh, I want to take you over to, uh, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Glory to God, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Glory to God, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Let's go to uh, John 16 real quick. John 16, living in perfect peace. Living in perfect peace. Thank you, Lord. You know, God is good and he's worthy to be praised. <clears throat> God is good and he's worthy to be praised. Verse 31, Jesus answered them, <clears throat> them who his disciples, do you, not, do you not believe? Do you not believe? Verse 32, behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that you shall be scattered, every man to his own, shall leave me alone, and yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. See, to have perfect peace, you got to know that although it may look like everybody is scattered, you are not scattered abroad. The Father is with you. Verse 33, these things I have spoken unto you. So he's just reminding them, and I'm reminding you about this perfect peace, that in me you might have peace. 
in him we have peace. In Jesus we have peace. He says the reason you want to anchor your faith there is because in this world that we live in, he says, you, this is the Savior talking now, you shall have tribulation, trouble, turbulence. You shall have it. He says, but be of good cheer. Remember, we got to switch gears. Be of good cheer. We got to start rejoicing. Be of good cheer. We got to have a positive outlook on this thing. Be of good cheer. Why would I be of good cheer? How can I be in perfect peace? Because Jesus said, I have overcome the world. Jesus said, posture yourself knowing that I have trailblazed the way when I was, when I was crucified, when I was buried, and when I rose from the dead. Listen, here's what I did for you. I overcame the world. You should be of good cheer. Why? Because Jesus has overcame the world. You should be in peace, and your peace is not in things. Your peace is not in perfect timing. He says, your peace is in me. He says, your peace needs to be in me. And when our peace is in Jesus Christ, let me tell you something. Storms, sharks can be all around us, but when your peace is anchored in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, Guess what? You will have a joy that comes over you. Why would you have that kind of joy in the midst of trials, troubles, and tribulations? I'll tell you why. Because you understand, past tense, that Jesus has overcame the world. Glory to God. He's overcame the world. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Philippians 4. Philippians 4. Let's go to Philippians 4 there and um, let the word of God speak to us. Thank you, Lord. You know, <clears throat> I am so ready to get back to a new normal. <laughs> and my faith is there. <laughs> my faith, look, 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 thank God for working at home. Thank God for, for, for being around family all the time. I love it. I love it. I praise God for it. But let me tell you something. I am ready to get back to a new Normal. I'm, 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 I'm ready. And guess what? Your kids are ready to get back to a new normal. So we got to shift. We got we to set our faith on, on, on a new normal. We got to set our faith on, 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 on things going well around the corner for us. We got to set our faith on tomorrow being better than it was before the pandemic uh, came in this world. Philippians 4. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Verse 5. Uh, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. I want you to keep this posture. You're rejoicing. You know, I see so much criticalness on Facebook. I see so many experts on what people should do. I see so many experts on, on, on what this one should do, what that one should do, so on and so forth. And it's like, you know what? I don't need to be an expert on everybody else's life. I just need to be an expert on my relationship with God. And my relationship with God will lead me, guide me, and direct me. And guess what? My relationship with God will cause me to pray for somebody who I may think is in error or moving too fast or whatever it is, but I am not going to be over-engrossed with their actions if they're going against wisdom. I'm just going to pray for them. You'll be stressed out. One minute, you're like, oh, my God, people at the beach. Oh, my God, there's people at Home Depot. Oh, my God, look at how many people's in Costos. Oh, my God, look at them having a party on the street. Oh, my God, look at them. There's eight people in the SUV. And it's like, why are you stressing yourself out trying to micromanage manage the actions of men in this world? You can't control that. So what do you do? Lord, I pray. I pray that nothing happens to him. Father, I just declare right now, no disease, no harm shall come nigh anyone in the Home Depot, anyone at a beach. Why? I can't control what those people are doing. But I tell you what, if we're not careful, we will be chief disseminators of that stuff all along Facebook, all along our friends' lines in the name of warning people against something. And it's like, you ain't got to warn them, just pray for them. We don't want to further the panic. We don't want to further uh, uh, the idea that we're experts on everybody's move, everybody's life. We don't want to further that. What we want to do is stay before God concerning our lives and stay before God to pray for this world. Amen. So rejoice in him always. 
That's what I'm choosing to do, and that's what I want, that's what I want you to choose to do. Verse 5, let, let your moderation be known of all men. The Lord is at hand. The Lord is at hand. Let your moderation be known of all men. Be careful for nothing. Stop worrying about stuff. But in everything, 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 by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. Verse 7, here it is. And the peace of God, not the peace of your finances, not the peace of your degree, not the peace of your vocation, not the peace of your bank account, the peace of God, the peace of God passeth all understanding, that passeth all understanding, watch this, shall keep, there that word is again, shall keep, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Paul is telling that church, listen, when, when, you, when you understand how to posture yourself in thanksgiving, prayer, and supplication, he says there's a rejoicing that comes over you. There's an overwhelming calmness that comes over you. There's an overwhelming sereneness that comes over you. And this overwhelming calmness, this overwhelming sereneness, this overwhelming everything is okay, it comes upon you. And guess what? The word says it surpasses your human understanding. It surpasses your mind. And it says the peace of God will keep you. You know, when somebody drops, drops, drops their child off with you, so on and so forth, or they call you and say, are you busy this evening? You, you say, no, I'm not busy. Hey, what, what do you, you want to do? You want to bring Billy over? Yeah, I just got to run a couple of errors. I want to drop Billy off. And, 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 and say, do you have time? And here's what they say. Yeah, I can keep him. I can keep Billy. And you take Billy over there and you drop him off. And guess what they do? They receive Billy and they keep Billy until you return. God is saying, listen, I keep you in perfect peace. I receive you in my arms when you got born again. And you are in my arms, my possession. I keep you in perfect peace. Think about this. He says, he says, he says, a pe the, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Listen, in this time of chaos, this time of turbulence, God is saying, listen, your heart is in my possession. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. So you got to have the peace of God to surpass all understanding. It will keep Take possession of our hearts and our minds. Somebody need to lift their hands and say, Lord, I receive this peace. And your word takes possession of my heart. It takes possession of my mind. It surpasses all understanding. And God, my peace is anchored in you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. <sighs> Isaiah 26. Let's go there. Thank you, Lord. And while we're going there, I want to read thought one to you. It's pretty powerful. And I want you to anchor these thoughts in your, in, in your mind and in your faith. Number one, we can't allow the what ifs. We can't allow the what ifs. We can't allow the what ifs we conjure up in our minds to become probable outcomes. What if this? What if that? What if this job does? What if my job don't? What if my kids can't? What if my senior can't? What if my wife can't? What if my husband can't? What if my parents can't? We can't allow the what ifs that we can conjure up in our minds to become probable outcomes for our lives because you get too far out there. You're giving thought for tomorrow. What if will cause you to be stressed out? Or what if this? What if that? Or when? Da, da, da. And God says, just let my perfect peace keep you. Let my perfect peace keep your heart. Let it keep your mind. But don't allow the what ifs that we can conjure up in our minds to become a probable outcome. 
you know, the very thing that you meditate on, you end up seeing it. And you keep meditating on layoffs, you keep meditating on, I'm going to run out of this, I'm going to run out of that. You keep meditating on all this kind of stuff. You know, they say, hey, we're gonna, it's going to be 2021 in the fall before we can even get back into X, Y, and Z. And I just sit right there at the TV. I said, I don't receive that. My God is bigger than that. I don't receive that. Grandmamas need to eat. Grandmamas need, grandmamas need to see their grandbabies. Single moms need to put food on their table. Husbands need to go to work. Kids need to, <laughs> kids need to get back to some organized learning. <laughs> you know, I got relatives with kids, and they're like, you know what? I'm anointed to be an engineer. I am not anointed to be a school teacher. I, I, it's just not in me, so on and so forth. And guess what? Kids need to get back to organized learning. The kids want to get back, and the parents want to get back. But guess what? You got, I, my faith is there. <laughs> my faith is right there, and your faith needs to be right there. Why? The only way you can get there is you're walking in perfect peace. And if you have perfect, if you're walking in perfect peace, and you, and God is keeping your heart and keeping your mind, it's being translated off your lips. That guess what? You know, I don't receive that 2021. Not because they're not right. Not because they're not doing their research. Not because they're not smarter than me. It's just I have the whole world on my mind. I've left my household. I have the whole world on my mind. And some people couldn't live a day without, uh, w w without some extra income. And now we're asking them to live 90 days? Six months? No, I, I, set, my faith on, I set my faith on a rapid return to new normal. I set my, I set my faith on God. I, I, I receive a rapid return return to a new normal. I receive that. But I'm, I, I, I don't receive these forecasts. Why? They will begin to put what ifs in my mind now. Man, they just said the fall of 2021. Well, what if? I'm trying to figure out how can we? I'm trying to figure out how are we? I'm trying to figure out how the kids gonna. And man, you get there going and it's like, you know what? Let, let me get out of that. Let me get out of that. I set my faith on a rapid return to the new normal in Jesus name. And the church said, a, 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 Amen. <laughs> Isaiah, Isaiah uh, 26. You should already be there. God is good and he's worthy to be praised. Now we're going to be looking at this in the message, the Amplified, and the Passion Translation. We're going to revisit this thing because I want to get to what I want to share with you today. <laughs> Isaiah 26. In the King James Version. Verse 1, in that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bullet and bulwarks. Next verse. <clears throat> Open the gates that the righteous nation shall keep the truth uh, that keeps the truth shall enter in. You will keep. You will keep. Possess, take possession of, keep him, him who, you, him who, your parents, him who, your children, him who, your wife, him who, your husband, him who, grandma, grandpa, keep him in perfect peace. Okay, here's a qualification. Whose mind, remember Philippians 4, whose mind is stayed on thee, why? Because he that's kept in perfect peace, trust in the Lord. Next verse. Trust ye in the Lord forever. Forever. My faith has been God as my source before the pandemic. It's been God as my source during this thing. It's going to be God as my source after this thing. People, are, you, you don't want to be a crisis responsive Christian. My God. You need to have this kind of faith, this kind of leaning, this kind of trust forever. For the Lord Jehovah is, watch this, your everlasting strength. And sometimes people are feeling weak during this time. Mamas are feeling tired during this time. Listen, listen, it's, 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 it's not the same. <laughs> and it takes the spirit of innovation. It takes the spirit of patience. It takes the spirit of calm. It takes all of those things for some households just to make it through the day. Why? Because, because mom's a high-profile marketing lady. She's on conference calls all day. She's got a 3-year-old. She's got a 10-year-old. She's got a 17-year-old. And they're all on different uh, uh, computers if, if the resources are there. 
and they've got to get their lessons. She's got to do her conference calls. She's got to take care of, of, of one, two, three in different grade levels. Let me tell you something. That is hard. And the only way she's going to get through it is she's got to press through God. She's got to press through this thing with God. But I tell you what, as long as she understands, it's not your strength that's going to carry you. Isaiah says, God is your everlasting strength. That's why we trust and lean on him forever. <clears throat> Let's keep reading. For he bringeth down them, them that dwell on high in the lofty city, and he led low, he led low, even to the ground, he bringeth it even to the dust. The way of the just is uprightness. You most upright do weigh the path of the just. Listen, the way is uprightness. Set your faith to that way as you walk in this peace. Now let's see this. Let's see this in the message translation. Watch this now. Let's see it in the message translation. Isaiah 26. At that time, this song will be sung in the country of Judah. We have a strong city, salvation city, built and fortified with salvation. You are built and fortified with salvation. Throw wide the gates so good and true people can enter. People with their minds set on you, you keep completely whole, steady on their feet because they keep at it and don't quit. Keep at what? Keep at prayer. Keep at faith. Keep at trusting and leaning in the Lord. They depend on God and they keep at it because in the Lord God, you have a sure thing. Somebody say perfect peace. In the Lord God, when you trust in him, you have a sure thing. Those who live high and mighty. Somebody say pride, ego, doesn't pertain to me. Hadn't even gave nobody a case of water and sitting there with thousands of dollars in your bank account. And you mean to tell me the Lord that you serve had not, have not even spoken to you to even reach out to single moms, grandmamas, and say, hey, are you okay? Haven't even spoken to you to reach out to your family and say, hey, I got a little extra coins. Are you okay? I can do this. I can send you a $25 gift card. I can buy your toiletry this month. Listen, we don't want to be set. We don't want to be carrying ourselves high and mighty and call it perfect peace. No, when you're plugged into God and this perfect peace, it's like I'm taken care of. And guess what? God, who, 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 who do you want to put on my mind? Because I'm others conscious right now. You bless me for this time. You brought extra into my hand for this time. But God knows I don't want to be sitting up here high and mighty saying to myself, listen, my four people, we're okay. You should have you did the right thing and put some stuff away, and you wouldn't be in the position you're in right now. We're going to be okay. Thank God. You know, we, we went ahead and did what we had to do. And not even mention your neighbor. Not even mention a family member. Not even send them $5, 10 15 20 dollars via Cash App. You, you, you'd be surprised how many people are believing God for a meal a day. And you have surplus and extra to supply a meal for somebody every day for a month. $25, about 700 bucks a month. You have that surplus. And guess what? You want to come out of this knowing, you know what? My heart is inclined towards God. I'm in perfect peace and God is real in me. God is real in me. Why? Because I thought about my neighbors. I thought about, I th I thought about those less fortunate. I, th I thought about the single moms. I, th I thought about the widows. And it wasn't much, but at least, my God, I, I know that I have a pulse of being a believer because I released goodness towards others, others out of my perfect peace. Let's keep reading that. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. How am I knocked off the high horse? He used a city built on a hill as, as, as field for the marshes, all the exploited and the outcast peoples. Build their lives on the reclaimed land. Let's just, let's just pause, right, pause right there. You do know what reclaimed land is, right? Reclaimed land is wasteland. It's like building a 5,000 square foot house in the Everglades. And he says, listen, these high and mighty people, these people who don't want to receive my perfect peace, these people who don't want to lean into me with all their trust, all their heart, all their minds, they're, you know, they're carrying themselves high and mighty, so on and so forth. But what they don't realize is Riches grow rings and fly away. What they don't realize is it's like they're building their homes on wasteland. 
there is no, there is no stability there. There's a good feeling. There's a prideful feeling. But it's a difference between having a good feeling and a prideful feeling and godly stability. You can have $25,000 in the bank with pride in your heart, and a widow, widow is, is believing God to, to put food on her table every single day. And I tell you what, that widow with godly stability can be sustained. And that $25,000 that, that, that you may think is holding you and not perfect peace and not God's hands, that $25,000 can go just like that. Now what? Because we're going to see later on in the Word, the very thing that you trust in, when that's shaken up, you're shaken. The very thing that we trust in over God's perfect peace, you, you, when that thing is shaken up, you're shaken. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> in your notes, write this down. The certainty of God's promises, we just talked about stability. The certainty of God's promises produces stability. The certainty of God's promises produces stability. According to Isaiah 6, 26, the certainty of God's promises produces a stability. We're not building houses on wastelands. We're not leaning to our own, honest, own understanding. We're not saying that the world is going to take care of us. We're in it. We're just not of it. But the certainty of God's promise, what is that? You knowing who your God is. You teaching your kids who your God is. And you teaching yourself who your God is. Somebody says, how do I teach myself? I'll tell you how you teach yourself. You look right at your bank account and go, okay, let, let, me, let me talk to you. Because I'm teaching myself something. I'm teaching myself something about God and about me as a believer. Now, you're sitting at $1,200. bucks. i am ready to take 200 of you and release you into the kingdom to let you know that you don't take care of me. To let you know that I don't lean into you for my security. And what is that? I'm, 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 I'm teaching myself that what? God is my source. And this perfect peace as I walk in, God is my source. When you don't have perfect peace, you restrain, you pull back. And you lean onto something that's unstable. You lean onto something that's wasteland. You don't have perfect peace. You think you have a perfect scenario where nothing can happen to you. Your, your, your riches can't fly away. But let me tell you something. You got to show God. I'm going to teach on this later on. You know, people... People in the church have got to understand, understand the, the, the greatest hallmark of your relationship with God is how you release generosity towards his kingdom. The greatest hallmark of your relationship with God, how we know that you trust in God, is how you release your resources towards the kingdom. Period. Point blank. End of the sentence. You, you, know, you know, I heard a powerful pastor go say, he said, man, I got diagnosed with with, with, with cancer, so on and so forth. I had to believe God. I got the confessions on. I, 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 I got away from people. I didn't tell everybody, so on and so forth. And, and he went on to say, he says, he said, now, 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 how hard would it have been for me to trust God to heal me of cancer if I had never trusted him with the green stuff? With the green stuff. So this is why you want to walk in perfect peace and let your finances know you're not in control here. Because when the rubber hits the road, when stuff hits the fan, you can't even cure me. You can't even do it. And he says, you know what? I'm so glad I took the hardest thing that believers struggle with to trust in God with. And I had taken that thing for years. And I told that thing called mammon and told that thing called money, you do not take care of me. I trust in God. And man, when that time in his life came where he had to trust in God for a healing, he was not second guessing what God could do for him. Somebody said, well, I really don't have none. My job did this. My job did that. If you're walking in perfect peace, if you got a dollar, two, listen, a dollar, two, the widow might had mites, pennies. But guess what she did? She demonstrated that I still trust God. I, I, I still trust God. And oh, gosh, when we get to the series, God is your source. You're going to see this so clear. A lot of people got businesses, a lot of people got careers, so on and so forth, and they think they're going to grow into this financial uh, 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 powerhouse without mastering the basics of finances as a believer. The basics of finances as a believer is this right here. I release this thing called money Towards my Lord as he, as he directs. Now, I know my God is 10%. I, I made 100 bucks this week. 10 bucks. It shows you trust God. 
I made 10 bucks this week. Hey, hey, one dollar shows you trust God. I made 10 grand this week. One thousand shows, shows you trust God. But this idea that, that, that you're going to build this big, powerful thing and you haven't mastered honoring your Lord and Savior financially, you're really fooling yourself. And you'll find your business, you'll find your self-employed thing, you'll find that thing letting you down, and guess what you got to do? You, 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 you got to go back to the drawing board and realize, man, this thing has let me down. And I tell you what, you got to get seed in the ground, and you got to master honoring God. Let's read uh, uh, Isaiah 26 in that next translation. I think it's Amplified. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. In that day, this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. He sets up salvation walls and ramparts, open the gates that the righteous uh, nation may enter. That hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That the nation may enter, the one that remains faithful and trustworthy. Next verse. So you will keep in perfect. Watch this. You'll keep in perfect and constant peace. You need to say that right now, Lord. You will keep me in perfect and constant peace. The ones whose mind there that thing is again. The battle is won up here. Keep your mind steadfast. That is committed. This is not in and out. This is not prayer until my job comes back. This is not prayer until my contracts come back. This is not prayer until my, until my customers come back. I'm committed and focused on you. Next verse. In both inclination, I'm leaning towards you. I'm leaning into you. I'm inclining my disposition towards you. I'm inclining my trust towards you and in character because he trusts and takes refuge in you with hope and confident expectation. In your notes. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. In your notes. Panic. Panic can occur when our security systems have been shaken. You want your perfect peace constant. You want constant peace. You want it fortified. You want it anchored. But I tell you what, when your security systems outside of God have been shaken, panic can occur. And for the believer, that shouldn't happen. They should have already settled it that God is their source to walk in this perfect peace. But in this time, in this hour, in this, this, this pandemic, your panic level is parallel to the systems that you thought took care of you. The systems that you thought took care of you, if they begin to fail, your panic will rise. <laughs> if they begin to fail, your fear will rise. And it's like God is like, I told you not to put your trust in them. I told you when those things are shaken, your peace is removed. And you got to get delivered from that and get delivered from it today. Amen. Let's keep going here. Oh, gosh. You know, who is it that God will keep in perfect peace? We learned this uh, two weeks ago. It's, it's, there's two types. Who is it that God will keep in perfect peace? Those whose mind is steadfast. Firm and fixed on him, number one. Number two, and those who trust in him. Those whose mind is steadfast and fixed on him and those who trust in him. That's what the word says. I will keep those in perfect peace. God says, I have a part and you have a part. Your mind needs to stay steadfast and constant on me and my promises. Your trust needs to be 100% in me. Psalms 118.8 says, listen, don't put your confidence in man. Put your confidence in the Lord. Why? Because he's constant. He's 24-7. Even when there's no inaction, God is working behind the scenes on your behalf. Even when God is not saying anything to you, he's saying everything to everybody else pertaining to you behind the scenes. He's never not moving on your behalf. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Woo, glory to God. A new normal. Rapid return to a new normal. I may, be good, I may get a T-shirt that says that. Glory to God. Let's go to John 14. My goodness gracious, I've been trying to get here all morning. John 14. John 14. And we're going to start at verse 
25. John 14. Hallelujah. This is going to bless you. This is going to bless you. Somebody said, how I know? Because it blessed me. I'm the first fruits of blessing for the church. If it don't bless me, I ain't going to say it. John 14, and me to get this ready for me in the Amplified and the Passion Translation. Mm. Right here, Jesus is, t- Jesus is telling his disciples that a comforter is coming. And he comes out of that, verse 25, these things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. I've told you these things sitting kneecap to kneecap with you. I've told you these things just kind of hanging out together. I've told you these things as we journey from town to town. <clears throat> but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. See, a comforter, see, the Holy Ghost is a comforter. This perfect peace, the Holy Ghost plays a part in that too. The Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Watch this. I've been trying to get here all morning. Jesus says, peace. I, I leave with you. My peace, my peace, I, Jesus says, give unto you. Not as the world gives. What is he doing? He's separating us now. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Listen to this. Woo, glory to God. The key here is Jesus said, my peace, glory to God. What peace are you talking about? Your peace, the peace that my father gave me. My peace, I leave to you. What is that? We are inheritors of Jesus' peace. He put it in his will and trust. Hey, just so you know, uh, the peace that God gave me, make sure that my children get it. My peace, I'm going to leave to you. Somebody say legacy peace. Do you realize what this means? We inherited the peace of Jesus. The peace that passes all understanding. The peace he had when the storm was raging in a boat. That peace, he says, I left to you. Do you understand they was in a boat, not the Royal Caribbean? You, know, you read that story and you go, well, we, you know, the, the, no, 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 a boat. You ever seen those little guys, you know, come in your subdivision and clean out your retainer pond? That little green boat, that's a boat. And imagine that boat in a Category 4. Imagine that boat in a tornado. There wasn't no doggone Royal Caribbean, you know, oasis of the seas and you can barely. No, no, no. This was a boat where the waves was tossing that thing all over the place. He says, that kind of peace. Well, I stood up and I had to be, I had to be, I had to be shook to wake up. And then I spoke to the storm and I said, peace, be still. That peace came out of me. That storm was responding to me. And he says, that kind of peace, my peace that I experienced in that boat, my peace that I experienced on the cross, my peace that I experienced in the Garden of Gethsemane, my peace is what I give to you. He left it to us. And here we are behaving like a category, hur- category five hurricane is going off in us. And he's looking at us like, uh, don't forget that piece I left you. <laughs> uh, don't forget the piece I gave you. My piece. Not nobody, uh, my piece I gave it to you. Don't forget it. The peace of Christ leaves us power. The peace of Christ 
leaves us, leaves us, or left us. Power to hold the wildest storm on pause. The most chaotic thing trying to come against us. That, that perfect peace that Jesus left us, the, the, the peace that he gave you, the peace he gave your, your husband, your wife, your children, that kind of peace, it can hold the wildest fear that's trying to get you at bay. That's the peace I'm talking about. It can, it, 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 it can, the storm can be going on, and this peace I'm talking about, this peace that Jesus left us, it can just say, I know you're wild, I know you're raging, I know you're chaotic, I know you're boisterous, but guess what? This peace here can hold you at bay. No harm should come out of my dwelling. <laughs> the storm can clamor. It can beat the windows. The economy can go up and down. Jobs can furlough. Jobs can lay off. Jobs can let go. But guess what? This peace that Jesus is talking about in John 24, he says, this peace I leave with you. That, you when people get an inheritance... They're better off. They should be better off or a better start than what their parents had. God said, my God, my dad left me a million dollars. A million bucks? Wow. How old are you? Uh, I'm 31. 31? Good gracious alive. What are you going to do with that million? I'm just going to throw it over in an annuity, earn 6%, and make $60,000 a year. Let, let, the, let, let, the goose, let the goose earn me 60 grand a year in interest off of it. Wow, and you're 31. What's your profession? Oh, I'm an engineer. Uh, I make $150,000 a year. Yeah, but you, you, but you got 60 coming from your inheritance. Yeah, I really, you know, it's just for my kids and grandkids. What, what, what happened? Your daddy dropped out of school. Your daddy drove a truck. Your daddy put food on the table. But when he left you something, your life was better than his. You got a better start than him. And Jesus says, listen, you inherited my peace. Please don't, please don't think it's shabby. You, I left it. It's legacy piece. I left it for you for times such as this, for you to make it through, for you to speak to storms and tell it to say, to tell it to say, to tell that storm, peace. Be still. Be still. You're not just speaking out of you. You're speaking out of the God in you, the, the legacy piece, the peace that Jesus left you. He gave you that peace. But you are a powerful person if you can get this revelation. Because now all of a sudden, no kind of storms can come down your bay, come down your, your dwelling. It, it can't even come. Why? Because this peace, again, it holds the wildest fears at bay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's look at this in the, in, in, in the Amplified. Thank you, Lord. I've told you these things while I'm still with you. Verse 26. But the helper, the helper, the comforter, the advocate, the intercessor, the counselor, the strengthener, stand by. Man, the Holy Spirit. Watch this. Whom the Father will send in my name. In my place. To represent me and act on my behalf. He will teach you all things about this peace I'm talking about. The Father sent him. To take Jesus' place. See, right now, you just need to go ahead and receive the Holy Spirit by faith. After this service, you need to just say, you know what? I've been hearing about this Holy Spirit. I, 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 I'm, I'm going to click that button, and I want to receive this Holy Spirit. Why? Because he says, whom the Father, this comforter. Go back to, to, to verse 25. I've told you these things while I'm still with you, verse 26. But the helper, the comforter, the advocate, the intercessor, the counselor, the strengthener, stand by. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit plays a part in this perfect peace. He gives us strength. He counsels us in chaos. He's an intercessor. An advocate stands in the gap for us and says, you know what? You won't touch them. You won't, you won't harm them. You won't stress them out. You will not place things on, more things on them than they can handle. You will not do that. And the Holy Spirit stands in the gap. You want to receive this Holy Spirit. Let's see this in the Passion Translation real quick. Thank you, Lord. So I say I'm walking in perfect peace. I am walking in perfect peace. I am walking in perfect peace. I'm not walking in perfect CNN. I'm not walking in perfect Fox. 
I'm not walking in perfect Facebook. I'm walking in perfect peace because my hope is in the Lord. Verse 25, I'm telling you this while I am still with you. But when the Father sends the spirit of holiness, whoo, glory to God, the spirit of holiness, the one like me who sets you free, he will teach you all things in my name. And he will inspire you to remember every word I told you. The Holy Spirit should be provoking us back to this perfect peace. The Holy Spirit should be reminding us, hey, hey, hey. The Holy Spirit should be like, hey, buddy, take your holiness pills. Take your faith pills. What, what are you doing? Why are you even sending that, that fear-based text? Stop that. Stop, stop, stop. Why would you even go in there and say that to your wife or your husband? Why are you acting like you're all terrified? Stop, stop, stop. Stop it. Go in there and encourage him before he leaves this house. Go in there before the day gets going. You, 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 you was mad when they took prayer out of schools, not prayers in your home. How many times have you prayed with your kids? That's the bottom line. You need to huddle up in the morning and you need to lean into God, lean into the Holy Spirit, because this perfect peace I'm talking about, your children need it too. But if all your children know, they've been at home with you for three weeks, all they know is mom and daddy still wake up. I don't see them pray. We don't pray together. So why are they barking about prayer in school? Listen, your kids want this perfect peace. But you know what? They're going to get the perfect peace when the parents get the perfect peace, model the perfect peace, disseminate the perfect peace, and pray the perfect peace every single day. Somebody said, well, I haven't been doing that. Don't feel shame. Don't feel guilty. But you're hearing it now on how to do it. You just make sure tomorrow before you get started, you huddle that family up and go, you know what, guys? We're walking in perfect peace. Now, I don't care what your friends are saying on text. The teacher may let something fly while she's talking about this pandemic. But our hope is anchored in the Lord. Our perfect peace is anchored in God. He is our everlasting strength. And that is where this family, that is where this family is anchored. We are anchored in the promises of God. We are anchored in the, in the protection of God. We are anchored in the perfect peace of God as a family. You know, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, the church is not on display. Believers are. The church is not on, on display. The church is not being tested. Believers are. <laughs> Because now believers, guess what? They're not in church. What are they doing at home? You know, the, the kids are not in the brick and mortar children's ministry. What are you teaching your kids from the word? <laughs> it's, 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 it's on the believer now. You got to abide in God and him and you. And if that happens, you disseminate it down to your family, to your children, so on and so forth. And Jesus says, listen, don't try to walk this out with your peace. That's not the peace I'm talking about. He said, I'm talking about the peace that I left you. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace, not yours. My peace I give it unto thee, not as the world gives. How do we define one peace from the other? How do we define the world's peace from Jesus' peace? How do we do that? The difference between the peace of the world and the peace that Christ gives us is where is your peace born from? The difference between the peace of the world and the peace that Christ gives us or gives you is what or where is your peace born from? Anyone can have peace if you give. Anyone can have peace if, 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 if anyone can have peace if you're giving credit to perfect scenarios in your life. And you guess, guess what? Life don't stay perfect. And you need to know that. Kids don't, kids don't stay perfect. And you need to know that. Well, I got, I got peace. Well, you got peace now because, because your kids are doing everything you tell them to do. And I used to be that kind of parent. When the pastor said this, I would say, nah, that's not going to happen to me. Uh, they're doing something wrong. I think we're doing a little bit more time, spending a little bit more time with our kids. That never happen to us until I realized, oh, your peace was in as long as they cooperate with everything you say. You say you got peace as a parent. But now that they're not doing that, where's your peace at, Derek? Where's it at? Was it in the world or was it in God? Which one was it? I tell you what, it's revealed. It's revealed. It's revealed. <clears throat> uh, oh, gosh. Thank you, Lord. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. As believers, it's important, it's important that we understand that the enemy 
is not after your business. Does not want your house. Does not need a place to live. He's not even after your career. He's not after your job. He's not going to take your job from you. He's not after your promotion. <laughs> he doesn't need your promotion. He doesn't need your position. He doesn't need your house, home, place of residence. He doesn't need your benefit package. Guess what he's after? Your mind. <laughs> he's after your peace. He's after your mind. He's after your peace. And if our peace dwells in those things, if our peace dwells and, and, and our peace is anchored in those things that the enemy is not after or the enemy does not want, all he has to do is shake them. <laughs> he don't want them. He don't want to possess them, but he can just shake them a little bit. Why? Because, because that worldly peace is anchored in those things. So he says, you know what? I, uh, I know how to get to your mind because I've recognized that your peace is not anchored in God. Your peace is anchored in your home. Your peace is anchored in your job. Your peace is anchored in your career. And I don't want none of it. But here's what I can do to keep you out of peace. Here's what I can do to keep you in, in anxiety. Here's what I can do. If I shake those things, I shake your peace. Because it's not anchored in God. And when those things begin to fail us, where God would have sustained us, guess what happens? We lose our peace. So again, if he shakes up our stuff, he shakes up our peace. <laughs> our peace shouldn't be anchored in stuff. But the enemy knows, ha, huh, your pivot foot, your, 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 your peace is in your kids. Your peace is actually in your career. Your peace is actually in your home. That's where it is. Your peace is actually in your position. Your peace is actually in your promotion. And I don't want none of that. But since you rely on that so much to tell you that you're doing okay, to tell you that life is okay, guess, all I, guess, what, guess what I can do with those things? I can just shake them up. And if I shake those, I shake your peace. If I shake those, I shake your peace. If I shake those, I shake your peace. This country was going along. Everybody knows that this virus, this virus, this is a novelty virus. It is, it's, it's like an amoeba. It's, it's, it's a novelty every single day. And everybody knows that. And we were going along, you know, schools and, you know, the kids come home from school and, and, and all this stuff and, and people being furloughed and working from home and, and family this and the family that. Blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, uh, I, I'm, still, I'm still good to go. My peace is in God. But when Wall Street start acting funny. When 401ks start dipping 25% a week, when that started happening, now all of a sudden people said they're not in peace. What happened? I thought you was in peace. Yeah, when this thing first started, I had my peace anchored in God, man. But when that thing came to my doorstep and start shaking things that I have my confidence in, it shook my peace. And I came here to tell you today, do not let that happen. Judges 16, real quick. Judges 16, real quick. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. Woo. Give me a big hallelujah from your living room right there. It's okay to shout to the Lord with the voice of triumph. Judges 16, verse, verse 6. Let's look at this real quick. I just chose this story, this little, this little story just to bring this point home. <clears throat> now, we just learned <clears throat> that if I can find out where your peace is, where your strength is, I'm going to get you. Verse 6, let's look at this. Let's, let's let this story bring this, this hour home for us, this hour of hearing about perfect peace. And Delilah said to Samson, tell me, tell me, tell me because I don't know. Tell me, even through a little, little, little religion in there, I pray thee. Watch this. Where is your strength? Now leave that scripture right there. 
I want to unpack this for you. Delilah does not know where Samson gets his confidence from, where Samson gets his peace from, where Samson gets his strength from. So now she's fishing for that thing because if she can find that, she will defeat him. Where does your great strength lie? And wherewith you might as be bound to afflict thee. Now, you know the story. The story was Samson, who, was, who vowed to be a Nazarite from birth, serve God. He was fully convinced and persuaded that his strength was here in his hair. And Delilah, just like the devil today that wants our perfect peace, is fishing and trying to form out of him. She wants to form, farm, like a farmer, farm out of Samson. Where do you have your peace and your strength? Pray. I pray thee, tell me. Well, we know Samson played games. He played and played and played. And then he finally said it. And here's what the word says. When he finally told her where his strength came from, the word says, the word says he showed her his heart. Mm, mm, mm. Here's why you got to walk in perfect peace with the perfect peace that Jesus Christ left you, that Jesus Christ gave you. Here's why we got to be inheritors of that peace. It's a legacy peace. The peace that he had, he says, listen, I leave you and I give it to you. Here's why we have to do that. Because the enemy, just like Delilah, will search you out and say, hmm, where's your peace at? In this pandemic, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> where's your peace at? And you know what he'll do? Once he discovers your peace is in your job security, he'll leave you alone. Because he knows that's where your strength is. But now, when it shakes up a little bit, your peace leaves. Why? Because you can't have perfect peace anchored in the world. And the enemy loves to search out and go, hmm, like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Loves to see, oh, you, oh, you got peace for, because of that? Yeah, but you're saying this, but you got peace because of this, but you're saying this. Huh. When that thing is shaken up in any believer, guess where that peace goes? <laughs> Clean out the door <laughs> because it wasn't anchored in God. It was anchored in things. And Samson, look at this, Samson, she said, tell me the secret. What's the secret? Not known or seen. So you can't see where my heart is anchored. I can't see where your heart is anchored. And she had to farm it out of him. Tell me the secret because it's not known and it's not seen. And whatever is not known and it's not seen is called a secret. And your secret cannot be that your peace is anchored in a career, job, 401k, kids, retirement account, investment, real estate. It's not known. It's not seen. It's a secret. But, but, but. But, but, but Satan, Satan, he, he, Satan does not need anything to latch on to to shake your peace up. So you got to denounce those things. Be grateful for them, but you got to denounce them. You got to denounce that savings account. Be grateful for it. Be grateful for the reserve. But you know what? During this message, after this message, you go right on your phone and say, you know what? I, I, thank, I thank God for my preserve. But, but, but you know what? I got to let this joker know my peace is not anchored in this because if he shakes this, he shakes me. Uh, give 100 bucks. Give 500 bucks. Give 1,000 bucks. What are you doing? You're telling yourself as a believer where your peace is. Glory to God. She said, tell me because it was a secret. And, 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 and <laughs> because what was she trying to do? She says, if I can learn his great strength, I can subdue him. I can put him on his back. 
I told the devil, I told the devil uh, when this thing started, you know, the church, this, we got e-groups. I told the devil, I said, we've been hearing from God. <laughs> and I ain't going to stop hearing from God. My wife been hearing from God. We've taught on divine assistance. We've taught on uh, 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 being connected to the true vine. We've taught, we've been hearing from God. And this is not my first time wrestling with my shoulders on the mat. I promise you, from a spiritual perspective, I am walking in God's promises. We are exercising God's promises. We are living in perfect peace. And we are telling that thing called mammon, you do not control us because if you shake that, you shake us. And I want you to set your faith. I want you to set your faith. I want you to set your faith to the point where you have no secret kickstands in your spiritual life that's holding you up. Glory to God. What confidence do you have outside of God that is not known or seen by your co-believers? I know what you tell them, but what confidence do you have outside of God that's not known or seen by your current believers? You got to deal with it and deal with it today. This thing, you rely heavily on it. It's almost an idol. You don't say it, but you truly feel this. That your job, the color of your skin, your finances, your degree, your career, your child will never do this. Say or think this ungodly thing. You, you have these little secrets, you know. Oh, gosh. If the enemy shakes these... He shakes your peace. And I'm here to tell you, you got to take those things and make them secondary to the perfect peace of God. You must receive Jesus Christ as your perfect peace. You must receive Jesus Christ as your inherited peace. Samson was asked to disclose the secret of his strength or his peace, knowing he had an edge. See, in his mind, he knew, man, I got an edge with this. I know I got an edge with this, but he was asked to disclose that edge for his defeat. So I want you to do this. Tell me the root of your confidence. I want you to tell your spouse the root of your confidence. I want you to tell your kids the root of your confidence. What's the root of it? What's the source of it? Where is it coming from? Is it coming from perfect peace? Or is it coming from a secret thing that you think is holding you up? Tell me the root of it. Tell me the root of it, and guess what? <laughs> if I gain knowledge of that, or if the explorer or the spoiler, the enemy gains knowledge of that thing, he will shake it. And when he shakes it, he shakes us. When he shakes those things, he shakes you. Repeat this after me in your, in your living room. I want you to say, Heavenly Father, I live in perfect peace. Heavenly Father, I receive the peace that you left me. I receive the peace that you gave me. This perfect peace is not shaken. I denounce the secret idols in my life that's given me false perfect peace. I denounce those things, and I bring your word forth to say, that you are my comforter, you are my peace, you are my perfect peace, and I live in you, and you live in me. I do not put my trust in man. I do not put my trust in horses or chariots. I place my trust in you to receive your perfect peace. Well, you're blessed by the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Perfect peace, glory to God. Living and walking in perfect peace. You should feel so good right now just to tell the devil, you know what, man, I, <laughs> one of my idols is I think I'm a perfect parent, and I'm not. And when one of my kids goes south, it knocks me off of my mental, emotional feet because somehow or another, the enemy had convinced me, and I convinced myself that I'm in control of that. You're not in control of nothing. The only thing you can in control of is what you receive. And I'm telling you, receive this perfect peace. Receive it from him. He left it, this legacy peace. He said, I left it for you. I want you to receive it. So therefore, if you want to be born again, click on that tab. We've got people who can lead you through the prayer of salvation. If you want to rededicate your life, 
Click on that tab right there on your screen, and people can lead you in rededicating your life back to the Lord. If you want to receive this comforter, this, this Holy Ghost, this strength,